This is Father Bonaventure Chapman. This is Father Joseph Anthony Cress. Welcome to God's Planning. Thanks to all those who support us. If you enjoy the show, please consider making a monthly donation on Patreon. Be sure to like, subscribe to God's Planning wherever you listen to your podcasts. Father Joseph Anthony. Yeah, what's crack clock mother? Oh, it's well, it's springtime. <laughs> it's a yeah. busy time for the college semester, I suppose. The students yeah. are moving on their way to. Well, we're not that far from from Easter, and the the semester ends. Mm-hmm. But well, actually, are you on a trimester there? Or do you have the regular semester? No, thing? standard semester breakdown. Um, okay. The University of Virginia, um, a lot of they really emphasize internships over the summer. So there's not a lot of uh, students mm-hmm. around for the summer, like there courses. Are some okay. There there are some of those, and sometimes you see students stick around, but they really do emphasize internships across all fields of study. Mm-hmm. Um, so you find a lot of students will do summer internships, but majority of the time it's your standard fall, spring semester breakdown. Okay. Are there any particular uh, University of Virginia like special days or events or mm-hmm. things during the calendar, like anything in the spring that the students do uh, that's coming up? Like, I mean, the spring break is a classic thing. Yeah, but like, yeah there's always what spring is your, breaks. And, are there any and special... Like that? University of Virginia old traditions or something in the spring times. A lot of a lot of the stuff actually surrounds graduation. Oh, okay. You know, um, being Mr. Jefferson's university and how yes. he organized it, there are some uh, you know wonderful traditions that that take place in the spring semester. But they do really kind of center around graduation. And the 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 major thing is walking the lawn at your final exercises. Oh, all right. So. Uh, each school within the university has its own kind of uh, graduation, mm-hmm. like the giving of the diplomas and, and the degrees and things like that. But there is one for the entire um, student body, and they, they kind of break it down depending on graduate students and, and things like that. But um, the students begin their time as a student at the University of Virginia with a convocation. Mm-hmm. And that convocation is on the lawn in the rotunda. Mm -hmm. Right. So all the students sit on the lawn and they face the rotunda, which is the library. Once again, Jefferson kind of designed the academic village in that Mm -hmm. sense. So they begin facing the rotunda. And then at the end, their final exercises um, as a student is they actually walk the lawn. So they start at the rotunda and walk all the way down to the lawn to the end of it. And their final exercises, they're facing out into the world. Right. And is so is there. Is that grass uh, generally not walked on? Is that is it? Like no, it's one? it's it's okay. It's an active lawn, and people are there, okay. you know, playing frisbee and football throughout the throughout the semester. When especially on nice days, you see everybody having like picnics and stringing up hammocks and stuff all like right. that. So it's very active, but it's like this, this special event. Is, yeah, yeah. They, they'll have all of the chairs lined up for the people who are attending the ceremony, but then there's a center aisle down yeah. for the students in their cap and gowns. Oh, okay. and, then uh, to help kind of identify the students to their family and friends, all the students, the tradition is that they get balloons. Right. So they get different shaped like Mylar balloons and stuff. And uh-huh. everybody knows like, uh, oh, like yeah. look for the shark balloon or the yeah. ear of corn oh, delightful, balloon. Yeah. Delightful. And then they gather those at the end and they take them over to UVA's Children's Hospital. And give them to all the children in the hospital. Oh, that's much better. It's really beautiful. I thought it was going to be like the release them to Wales. No, uh, that's great. No, that's nice. Oh, that's delightful. It's really, it's really fun. It's it's a great tradition. I love it. We had in in Grove City. We had some of these traditions, but one of them was that uh, you didn't walk on the grass at any point, except your except your senior year. You 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 walk across it, but you wouldn't walk on the quad. It's very, Mm -hmm. it's kept premier shape. Very nice. pristine so that it looks beautiful pictures i mm-hmm. uh, did Stu- you were at steubenville did steubenville yeah. have any quads that you weren't allowed to walk on no okay so everyone no, it was play just, frisbee it was, whatever yeah. yeah we were free range yeah. out there free okay. range college students so Fantastic. you could do whatever you wanted yeah well this is this transitions us nicely to the the episodes about mm-hmm. um college and and it's worth and you might think today uh why why are we, you know, of course, college, it's, I mean, it's just a thing you do. It's like breathing or bathing or, Every, or brushing graduate teeth high school, sort of thing. immediately go to college. Um, that's what everybody does. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, but I think there's a sense of people asking the question, is, is college today worth it? And what yeah. kind of college be worth it? So we thought we'd just talk through some of, some of these issues since I teach at a university yep. uh, and you're a chaplain at a university. Yep. So we're around colleges and um, we'll try not to. Hopefully, we won't have undercut our our futures in this episode. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, but first, because people assume that college is a necessary type of thing, so let's just go. Both of us went to college. It's, I mean, it's a it's a major question right now. Before we get into kind yeah. of like uh, how this all started, but like it's a major question right now because in higher education, um, 
there's a projections of what's called the enrollment cliff mm -hmm. that is coming up in about two years. I think it's like 25, 26 is they're projecting this enrollment cliff of roughly 500,000 students will 500,000 less students will be enrolled in college in the year 20, 2025 or two, 2026, huh. something like yeah. that. And so it's a major conversation that a lot of um, policymakers, a lot of administrators and those that are working in the universities are actually trying to figure out, well, what is the future of the university? Yeah. Um, because there's less interest in it and there's other options now. And yes. there's a high cost financial and other uh, emotional, psychological and yeah. professional and all these other things that are happening. And the projections actually are pretty bleak for the universities uh, in the yeah. United States. So this is a, I think this is a really uh, important conversation to have to actually talk through. Uh, yeah, the when, role uh, whether of you're that. whether you're looking at college, whether you're in college, whether you're planning for a career post college, right, a, right. a career that might involve a college, whether it be ministry, whether it be a professor, whether it be something else. Um, it, the college landscape is changing a little bit, so right. maybe giving some guidelines and thoughts about it are helpful. But let's start with let's go back a little bit mm -hmm. and think about. Um, I mean, when you were going to college, was it just assumed? Did you did you know people that didn't go to college, or was college uh, something that everyone in the yeah. Crest family and everyone in the Crest the Crestes knew? Yeah. Like it just once you went to everyone went to middle school, everyone went to high school, everyone everyone went to college. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing was that your did you have did you have to decide to go to college, or was it more deciding which college to go to? Would you say? Yeah, I think it was more of a decision of which college mm -hmm. to go to. The expectation was you go to college. Yeah. Now, did I know people that didn't go to college? Yes, a mm -hmm. lot, actually. I mean, growing up in a small town, Ohio, um, and things like that, it was not uncommon for somebody to not go to college. I mean, my father doesn't have a college degree, mm -hmm. and he really emphasized academics in our family. It's like mm -hmm. you learn, you do well in your yeah. school so that you can go to college and get a good paying job so you don't have to work hard like I do. Mm -hmm. Now, the irony of it is... I think all of us kids in my family, we learned our work ethic from sure. our parents and yes. they work their tails off. Yes. And so it didn't really matter what quote unquote work looked like. We all work hard. Yeah. You know, so like that's a little bit of the irony of it. But um, in our family, it was very much emphasized like the academics in school is, is where mm -hmm. you go and that's where you invest is yes. you invest yourself in academics. And so it wasn't really a question of should I or shouldn't I? It was, okay, what's the best college to go to? What's right. the best option? And and where do you go from there? Yeah. And that being said, I mean, I still, um, the majority of our class went to college, uh, like at a graduating mm -hmm. high school. Once again, small town high, super small school. I think I had 60 kids sure. in my graduating class. Well, that's a good s sample set though. Yeah. And the majority went, yeah. And I think we all went to college, yeah. but not all of us finished college. Right. You know, some guys either, you know, left a few years into it yep. or, or things like that. So um, it was, it, it wasn't unheard of to see somebody that doesn't have a college degree sure. in, in my area growing up. Yeah. Yeah. My experience was similar. I mean, everyone went to basically, uh, well, and this is the weird part is that everyone <laughs> went to college. Everyone was supposed to go to college. And the problem was that when you emphasize that, it meant the people that didn't finish, for instance, um, there was a stigma associated right. with that. When I think maybe perhaps they shouldn't have gone to college in the first right. place. Yeah. Um, and there's no need to feel and hide that or struggle with things. Um, so this is part of one of the reasons to talk about is to break down like what what is college and who should be there and why should you be there if you, if you uh, do should you want to be there? Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about some of the costs then in yeah. uh, when we talk about is college worth it? If something's free, you say is it worth it to have? And you say, well, it's free. I'll just take it. Why not? Yeah. But college, I'll but decide col later if it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. then we could think immediately, oh my gosh, this is just college in terms of economic, like yep. you know, model cost benefits analysis. But we won't <laughs> end with that. We're gonna, but we'll start with the fact that that it is true that college does cost things. Yeah, uh, costs one an exorbitant amount of money. Insane um, amount. So I think you might have. Insane. I mean, most places, average private school. If you're going to private school. Uh, would be around fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, all said and done. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. you know that's two hundred some, two hundred plus thousand, depending on the on the school after four years. I mean, you're typically public schools are in not debt bad. around six figures. Yeah, you're like, coming out of college. At least that's, um, that's your four year cost of so six yes. years, whether you pay yeah, that yeah. off or in yes. debt with that. But like it, the, what we're looking at generally now, and obviously in states a little cheaper. But even mm -hmm. if you go out of state. Like University of Virginia, I know the out-of-state mm -hmm. cost is is exorbitantly it's massive, higher. yeah. And we have a lot of out-of-state students. Sure, it's a good school, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, so it's expensive. Um, very. 
state schools are are, are much cheaper, mm-hmm. um, but and uh, but they still have costs associated with them. But I mean, we're on thing on the private level. I think also uh, there, what do we call this? The moral indoctrination issue, um, yeah. or the the nonsense issue, like. <laughs> Um, so many, I mean, this is one of those crusty conservative things that if you're on the right wing, you're always, since the nineties, basically you've been saying all the academy is run by leftists and Marxists and oh we're just gosh, doctoring yeah, yeah. students and, and you, it's only in the business classes you get capitalists and like conservatives and libertarians and all this. So the college used to be, college used to be kind of a neutral space and now it's a liberal mm-hmm. Marxist hothouse with some pockets of resistance sort of mm-hmm. thing. I don't know uh, if that's entirely a fair characterization, but it is true that uh, the academy tends to lean left. Yep. Um, and that in you, some universities, you will be uh, have to take courses from people who will teach you a bunch of nonsense, which doesn't mean that you can't learn from that right. via negativa. But that's, I don't know, maybe, I mean, Catholic University, America where I teach is, is Toad line pretty pretty well. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. but uh, but I wonder if it, maybe University of Virginia, there's a little you see a little more of the kind of especially with uh, campus protests and this yeah. kind of this mm-hmm. kind of cu- the culture of resistance uh, that's involved there. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's um, at its core and at its ideal, it's supposed to be a, a, a engagement in pursuit of truth and in, in, in finding that in many ways. And typically, you have to engage with differing viewpoints and things like that. And so. What you find is that it tends to be um, this kind of hotbed for, or maybe like an incubator for these new ideas yeah. that often can take, you know, very um, kind of vol- ways, yeah, yeah, volatile expressions of mm-hmm. that, and with not a lot of experience and grounding, but it kind of can can spiral out of control in that way because it seems to be this is where ideas are proposed and engaged in, but that means that it gets. Uh, push too far and gets yeah. radicalized. And where does it get radicalized? Well, first of all places, because you're dealing with impressionable minds and people who are open to new ideas, like yeah. you know, young students, and they're looking at their professors who have credentials and experience, and they just assume uh, the best, which is you know trustworthy sure. and that's good. But the the college atmosphere can lend itself to that kind of um, kind of byproduct, which yes. is a, a hotbed for these types of issues. Yeah. And if you're a parent, you might think I'm not, I'm not sending, I'm not paying $50,000 a year to have my kid indoctrinated to come home and fight me at Thanksgiving about whether <laughs> there's, whether there's a good or bad in the world or whether everything's subjective. Um, and it might be, if you're thinking about college or entry career of college, you might think, I don't know if I want to exist right. every day in this kind mm-hmm. of thing. Like maybe I'll do something else that doesn't involve this kind of, this, this political nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also I talk. I mean, it also might be wasted years too. I mean, you might it's four years, maybe five, depending on how you do. So right. I mean, it's, that's a lot of time, and it's not your prime, but it's the start of things. And yeah. so that's t- so all of these are costs here. Um, and I don't want to do the benefits, but instead shift to a more a bit mm. more friendly uh, from a Thomistic perspective and a traditional perspective. Is well, what is the point? Like to what end? What is the end of colleges? What's the point or the goal of colleges? What did they provide, not as a service, but as an institution that yeah. would make it, for instance, worth it? And here it seems to me we could see it under two aspects. One is the intrinsic end. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what does it provide? What good does the, the university provide that is provided no other way? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's good in itself. And then the second thing would be, does the university provide... Uh, Good, a means to other goods right, right, that are right. either achieved better, that easier there, or mm-hmm. cheaper there, or in a more efficient way, you could say, mm-hmm. or in any sense. Um, so, are there, what's the good end of the college? Yeah, yeah. And is that good for you? And what is the good means of the college? And are those good means for you? I think. So let's talk about the first one with the, the that, good end of it. Yeah, the the intrinsic kind of nature of the university, in 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 that sense. I always go back to a quote from actually the current president at the University of Virginia, President Jim Ryan. Uh-huh. Uh, one of his first convocation addresses to the incoming students, uh, it was like his second class that he was addressing. He actually was reflecting on what is the purpose of a university. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, the the core identity of a university is to pursue truth. Mm-hmm. And he's like, that has to govern all of your studies. Mm-hmm. And this is why you are here is to pursue truth. And it was it was a beautiful statement and, and really kind of from my perspective unexpected. Like I yeah. didn't hit, expect to, to hear that, but I think it's it's yeah. a really important thing to remember that in all these different fields of study, right? These are not just hobbies or interests that you want to know more information about, 
right? It's not about gathering information yep. as a, a an amassing of like kind of facts you know, to be facts to yeah. be deployed. Mm-hmm. But he was like, no, this university experience is to engage in a pursuit of truth and reality. Yeah, and you can do that in all these different fields, but like that has to govern your pursuit. And it was. Like I said, I love that's that quote. Nice. And it was it was beautiful to hear that from a university president uh, to I, be able to identify that and set that tone for the student body and that. But I don't think he's wrong either. No, I mean, <laughs> like I, I really don't think he's wrong. Well, that is and truth and and knowledge, the knowledge of the truth are is an intrinsic good. It's a yeah. good in of itself. If you ask yourself, I want to know the truth, and you could say, Well, why do you want to know the truth? And the answer is because knowing the truth is good. Right. And you say, Why is it good? Because it's it's no, it's just a fundamental stopping point. Yeah. Um. That that knowing the truth, that we are knowers and lovers, and so loving and knowing the right object is a good in itself, and it's a perfection of the human person. And the university, it seems, is in its at its best, is set up as an institution, an organ of knowledge of the truth in the universal capacity, yeah. whether it be into economics, sociology, psychiatry, physics, biology, theology, law, philosophy, whatever, humanities, yeah. that we, it's good to remember that the reason we have these buildings and mm-hmm. people at these buildings is because it's the organ for providing truth and knowledge of the truth. And that's, even if it didn't do anything else, yeah. that would be, yeah. even if it didn't provide, you know, uh, support for research grants, for, for defense funding, that we could use this truth for something else, in itself, knowing the truth is why it's there, not that it can serve mm-hmm. some other purpose with the truth, but the truth itself. And I think that's where, like, you can see, like, well, and we, this might get to the the second end that mm-hmm. we're saying, like, a means to an end. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the university experience and a lot of the universities have moved into basically professional training schools. Mm. Right. Yes. That this university experience is four years here is to get a certification, which we call a degree, so that I can then get a job. Yes. It's a means to an end. Yes. Right. And so it's not the pursuit of truth as is in learning how to be a critical thinker and to evaluate all these other things yeah. to kind of hone those skills. But I'm actually trying to amass a skill set and perfect a skill set in such a way that I can present a piece of paper and say, I have this skill set as a training ground for a profession. Yes. And that uh, and I remember I was at a, another college in the state of Virginia visiting for, for a, a thing or an event that I was doing. And walking around that campus, like you just see the student body it was a very different student body than where I am at the University of Virginia. And I just got the sense that the that college was ordered in such a way that their number one target was to get their students jobs. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing, just like even just how the students carried themselves. You could tell that they didn't give a rip about the college. All they cared about was getting their credentials so that they could get the best job. Yeah. And it's a totally different engagement than saying, I want to pursue truth and learn how to be a critical thinker and learn how to kind of hone my skill set, which is my intellect. Yes. And that's a different thing than saying, I just need to get the best job possible. Yeah. And one of the, so the, one of the aspects between the, the college as a professional training ground for this, as a, as a means to the, to an end, to Mm -hmm. a job, to a good career, to a profession, to what have you, uh, versus it intrinsic in of its own end as the, as the knowledge one of the reasons I think that we shift to this more practical dimension, mm-hmm. the means end version, is because we can access, or we think we can access, that first intrinsic good of knowledge outside the university. It just is true that if you wanted to know the best, learn from the best thinkers, read the best things, and have be directed by the best people a um, hundred years ago, you would have to go to a, uni- a university that was had people trained for this. Right. Right. But with the with one proliferation of education in general, but also the access to to books, I mean, to cheap books on Amazon, well, the whatever internet, you want, man, the internet, this sort of thing. Now you can uh, get access to almost all of those things that you could have access to the university. Mm-hmm. The the difference, of course, is that university, when done well, is curating in a way the museum curates what you ought to look at and mm-hmm. what is beautiful, as opposed mm-hmm. to just you making up your own museum of beautiful art, which you may or may not have abilities to do. That's a great. In the same way, the yeah. university is job is to curate what you should know, mm-hmm. um, and that's where the kind of the political ideological stuff we worry about right, might there. Right. But in its best. You might think, well, I can just access the the knowledge and all of this database and all of the great traditions and the great books and all this by myself. And I think sometimes you can, but if you really want to dig down in it, you actually do need someone to help you. You need a teacher uh, to be taught. Dude, and 
there's something there that just yeah. This is the good. This is Goodwill Hunting, right? Uh, yeah, right? probably. Where um, I've never seen that movie, but yes, Matt Damon. Oh my gosh, you've never seen. It. Okay. I don't like Matt Damon. Uh, Dead Poets Society, I have seen. I love. That's, yes, uh, yes, that's fantastic. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Matt Damon, the character is he. He's like a janitor at the school and all that stuff. But he, there's a famous quote where he's at the bar and he's like, how much do you pay for your college and education and all that stuff? And he said, like, I learned all of that with like 200 or I mean, two dollars and 50 cents in late fees at the public library. Right. Like he just he yes. went to the library. He had access to it. Yeah. But it was it's it's just so much more radically like available because now we've shifted away from these types of um, intellectual engagements and pursuits to now just amassing the information. But it's that that same kind of concept. Is it readily available? And if so, you have to be kind of self motivated and driven to do that and kind of curate your own mm-hmm. education, which many people can mm-hmm. do. Yes, that's and many people have always done that. So and that's it's not cheaper. Ne- and it's cheaper. Yes. So it's not necessarily a new issue, yes. but. The newness of it is how Available. radically accessible it is yeah. now. It's in everybody's pocket on their smartphone versus making sure you were in an urban center that had a, 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 a strong library yep. that you could have access to. In that now, sense. one of the other aspects that's intrinsic good before we switch to this would be that even though, yes, you can get access to those things, um, do you have a community around you? I don't know if you experienced this, but part of the deal with, with college was you could stay up till two or three at night, mm-hmm. not in drinking fest, but rather like debating free will and predestination. Now yeah, that's I never not, did everyone that. does that. I okay, did do that. that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But some of us, so I couldn't do that at home. Like you can't, you know, you, you don't have people who are studying and intensely willing to discuss things all the time. And there's this like precious time for that. But of course, you don't have to do that in college as yeah. well. But let's shift to uh, then. So these intrinsic, there's intrinsic ends, which you may be able to achieve other places. And so you might say mm-hmm. $50,000 is not worth it. There are other means to ends now. And the question is whether the col- whether college is actually good for that. Yeah. It's Because clearly in these non-intrinsic ends, so aiming for something else, uh, whether it be professionalism or something else, uh, this is using a tool for something not quite what it's supposed to be used for. Mm-hmm. Now there is it is true that you can use a flathead screw, screwdriver to 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 uh, unscrew Do a, lot a Phillips of yeah, yeah. A Phillips head. It works. It works. But it's not designed for that. Mm-hmm. Um, although it is useful. So th- this college, when you ask, is college worth it? It might it might be worth it for these sort of things, but uh, it's it's not what it's designed for. Right. And you might think. Could I get these things in other ways? Yeah. So one of the things, as you mentioned, is is professional certification. Yeah. Uh, at this point, some business schools and other things, it seems like going to a business school is cr- about credentialing, and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that college might be what you're doing with that. Um, nursing school has yeah. its own kind of thing, but there's a lot of technical skills and schools here that you might be able to get somewhere else, yeah. as opposed to going to university and then having to take calculus, Latin, philosophy, the liberal arts core, which are good in themselves and you ought to desire, but time and money is not always available. Yeah, and you know, I I recognize there was a um, there was an article about um, I think Google has a program, a certification program on learning how to code into different languages, so Python and all these, and you can do that at your own speed, at your own time, and you get a certification from Google that you completed and passed it, and then you can take that certification and get jobs, yep. and it's totally free. And yeah. it's like, well, if you, do you go for a computer science or do you just get this certification for free and then jump into a decent paying job? So I think that brings up a whole nother question, maybe a little bit of our experiences when mm-hmm. we were going to college and, you know, some of our classmates who maybe didn't finish college is yeah. because they their their skill sets, their passions are not necessarily in kind of information work. Yeah, life of mind. Yeah, yeah, and and so we have to kind of start to look at is like, okay, where is what is the individual and what is the skill sets of the individual when their passions and pursuits instead of just assuming they're going to thrive in an academic environment. I know many mm-hmm. many of uh, people that I grew up with and things like that. They're doing fantastic. They're great. They're happy, but their skill set wasn't in in an academic environment. And yeah. once they got out of that environment, they were able to. Uh, be creative and and have really uh, beautiful gifts and, and um, establish families and lives and, and businesses really um, in that sense. And so when we're looking at it, it's like um, that was more of a real it, like option in previous generations when there was a lot of work in craftsmanship mm-hmm. and all these other things. Um, there was a phrase that I picked up from a, a book from Cal Newport, which I think he, somebody else coined it, but that's where I found it first was just we're in an age of information work. 
Mm -hmm. And because that information work is not very tangible in the sense that it's on a computer screen or in a cloud, the assumption is you have to go to an academic environment to get that skill set. And what we're finding now is that the pendulum has swung away from that and saying, actually, you can do this by YouTube videos. You can do this by online things. And we've lost certain craftsmanship but there is real craftsmanship in digital marketing or real craftsmanship in coding and all these yep. things. But you can get that yep. apprenticeship and that craftsmanship once again outside of an yes. academic environment. So for some individuals, the university's academic environment may not be the best environment sure. for them. And yeah. those have to be real quite And that's what's being challenged now and projected with the enrollment cliff is okay we've actually swung to a different style of work Mm -hmm. now what is supporting that work what is facilitating that and where does university play within that new matrix sure yeah that's right i mean it it, it is the shifting uh aspect and playing around with these these free self-motivated programs you could say that people now you might think um yeah the really go-getters will use that Mm -hmm. but maybe someone who needs coding and training certification needs a bit of the whip, um, not just the carrot, and that a university does or a college does provide Mm -hmm. some of that that forces you to get these assignments in and the structured, again, curated experience such that you know that you're going to finish in four years and get this degree or two years and get this degree. Um, Another thing as a means to, I think, when I try to justify the university as a means, if you could do it without as an ends, um, is maybe the the other thing is the social social aspect of it. Yeah, I Um, I think there is... There's something about America, the colleges in America. There's the bad side of it. That this is a place where you, the moral law is suspended for four years Absolutely. and get through it and binge drinking because of how our, our yeah, 21, culture. Yeah, yeah, how the, yeah. how oh the, the alcohol policies and all this. Sort of, in any case, that's the bad side of socialization, I could say. But I think there's also a, a great good of socialization in colleges that can't be gotten in other places, mm-hmm. it seems. Mm-hmm. You're usually with people who are more or less your same age yep. um, from similar backgrounds. That could be a problem, too. But... Um, and also people that are like-minded mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. in terms of abilities and desires and such. Um, so it is a problem that in colleges you start to silo off and you don't get to meet yeah. always with people. And you might think, I only I only talk to people of a certain intellectual level. I mean, Charles Murray points this out in Coming Apart, uh, in, Coming Apart the book in America, and the continual stratification of this. So that's a problem. Um, but there is, there is a sense in which college provides you to live in a small village, basically, Mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. its own common goods, its own political kind of goods, and provides you with one, knowing people for friendships, but also, uh, I mean, dare I say, the MRS degree, you do find, it's likely that you'll find a spouse if you're going to a a Catholic school or something, um, whether you're you're a a guy or a gal, who is, you want to marry, who has enough like you, similar similar interests, similar, you know, cognitive background, similar what, uh, whatever, that might be a good foundation for a marriage. Now that brings up a question of like, what is, and this is a larger episode, like, well, you know, to mar- you know, to marry someone always in your socioeconomic background right, and right, such. Yeah, yeah. But I think many people marry in college. And when mm-hmm. they get out of college, they actually have a hard time finding yeah. uh, marriage, yeah. people, people for marriage. I mean, when we're looking at the social element of college or university experience, I, I think I have two things that jump mm-hmm. to the, uh, into the spotlight for me. And the first is kind of what you're alluding to. Um, currently our society and our culture has delayed maturation mm-hmm. to the university years. Yeah. That's you know, right. like the coming of age is not in high school anymore. Yeah. You know, the coming of age is in, in the university. Um, and I think that brings up the, the first point is, um, our pastor down at, uh, Charlottesville, um, father Walter, he used this line and has always stuck with me. He's like the unique thing of, uh, engaging and dealing with college students nowadays is that they are searching for two things simultaneously. They're searching for autonomy and community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. And yeah. you have to navigate and help them accomplish both, both of things. those yeah. is to learn who they are as individuals but also how do they engage in a community? How do they engage in civic discourse? How do they engage in a faith community? How do they engage in social dynamics? Like, because both of those have to be accomplished yes. at the same time. And up until this time of the university years, they haven't been able to do that. They've been dependent mm-hmm. and everything yes. has been forced to them. Yes. And now they have to do it and kind of navigate that. And we as chaplains, mm-hmm. at least from my perspective, I'm given a privileged space to help shepherd that yeah. and, and shepherd them through those moments. Um, the other thing that I always talk about, especially with our graduating students, is when you look at it, 
once they complete college or the university, that is the last time in their life that they will be surrounded by proximate peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. And thus, because of that, because of the, like you said, it's kind of a fabricated or forced village mm -hmm. setup, but they're around pro their peers in very close proximity. Mm -hmm. And because of that, relationships become very accidental. Yeah. I just see this person down the hallway or I have this class with this person and we paths crossed and now we have this friendship or paths crossed and now we are dating and yep. yeah, all these like all types of relationships, romantic friendships or whatever it may be. Everything's very accidental. Mm -hmm. But after after that, you lose that proximity mm -hmm. to your peers. It's not it's not assumed. No, it's you know? intentional. Yep. So now all of your relationships have to become intentional. Yeah. And that's a really, really hard shift for a lot of uh, a lot of our students who go from college into sure. a professional life and don't understand that almost tectonic shift that happens now because you're moving from you know twenty some odd years of always being next shoulder to shoulder with your peers, whether mm -hmm. that's in in age or in socioeconomic or in intellectual capacities, you're with your peers. Yeah, and then. So every relationship is accidental, including romantic relationships, mm -hmm. you know, but once you get out of that, now everything has to become intentional Yeah, because nothing is given, nothing is, is forced in, and you have to be able to navigate that really well. Yes. And those are the social dynamics. Of, yes. And of then it. to provide an opportunity, but also there's a danger there that you could feel like you're actually very good at knowing and making friends and all of this when it's not the case. Yeah. And then so, you get out into a professional life and you're like, whoa. Now yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't know how to have a relationship. I don't know what real friendship looks like. I was always the life of the party and I had everybody around me. I walked, I was big man on campus, but then I get out there and nobody gives a rip about me. Who sure. am I now? Yeah. Yeah. And that's points up again that this is a, this is a, an instrumental means that the university, which it's not designed to provide. And so it might provide opportunities for something, but also could go down the other route yeah. and make it harder to do this and make you feel actually dis it, like you have yeah. the illusion of confidence totally. or confidence when actually it just happens that people are just around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that maybe the, the good point about this question is it asks us to really think about what we think college ought to be Yeah. as opposed to just taking uh -huh. something for granted. I think it, it asks us when we say, is college worth it? Not just personally, but as a society, what do we think college or university is aimed at? Mm -hmm. What is it for? And if it's not one of those intrinsic goods, are there other goods that can, other means that can get to that good even, even better? Yeah. And are we making the college into something that it ought not to be? And those are tough societal questions, but I think they're on everybody's mind. And it's good to think personally too about my relationship to, to college what I see about whether it's something to, to, to send my children to yeah. or to encourage people to or to support. Um, it asks us to really look at whether the college university has been taken seriously mm -hmm. in what is to, or whether we've gotten a bit flabby on what we expect it to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, that's enough for now. Uh, so the, whether you go to college, Bennett College, going to college, in any case, uh, we thank you for listening to this episode of God's Plain. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, it's probably X now, right? Instagram, like, subscribe, leave a five-star review. If you'd like to donate, uh, please do so through Patreon. Follow the link in the description. You can also follow the link to find God's Plain merchandise and our website, which gives upcoming retreats and information about events. Uh, so if any of our retreats there are, are posted, you can look in there. This highlight for you in on April 16th, there is a one-day reflection, day of reflection in St. Patrick's Church. Uh, in, in Columbus, Ohio, so at St. Patrick's Church, our Dominican church in Columbus, Ohio. We'd love to see you there. So if you look on the on the website, you'll find the other retreats, and especially St. Patrick's on April 16th. That's it for here. Know of our prayers for you. Please pray for us, and we'll catch you next time on God's Planning. Father Bonaventure, if you had to choose between getting Warby Parker glasses, subscribing to a YouTube channel, or flossing your teeth, what would you choose? Oof. I guess, to be honest, subscribe to a YouTube channel. <laughs> See, folks, it's not as bad as flossing your teeth or getting Warby Parker glasses. Please subscribe to God's Planning. Cheers. <laughs>